Welcome back to my series on having a narc free new year. And for those of you who don't know, it's where I'm reading excerpts out of my book, Healing from Narcissistic Abuse, Recover from Empathy Deficient Relationships and Emotionally Unavailable People. If you want the links for it, it is going to be down below. And also if you missed other videos in this series, I will have them at the tail end of this video so you can just click on through. With that said, let's get on with it. All right, page 89 on dealing with a narcissist in chapter four, maintaining boundaries. Well, adding to their incessant behavior, talking about the narc, is the fact that setting boundaries is not just a one-time event. You will continuously have to reinforce boundaries with this person, sorry, facts, right? If you choose to continue a relationship with them, that's what it's gonna involve. Like the example I gave earlier of um, a parent of mine when I was in my early 20s, I was trying to like hang up the phone, which was a boundary being set, you know, when she would ins um, insensitively talk about, you know, uh, abuse that had happened within the family, um, just kind of like acting like it wasn't a big deal, that I was making a big deal out of it, and why don't you just forget and forget and all of that. She just really talked to me as if we were all just family and there's not a problem here and everything's okay, right? It's the false reality, the distorted reality. So, um, you know, her attitude was, let's just get along and live happily ever after because that's my false reality that I need you to play along with so that there's not a problem here. And uh, what happened was in the past, it's over with, we don't need any consequences, right? This is the narc talking. Um, and so when I try to put a boundary up on this insensitive talking and her wanting me to play charades with her that things were okay when they were not, um, oh, it really infuriated her, you know, because I told her basically, if you bring this up, we're done, where I'm just gonna hang up the phone. Well, me hanging out the phone and enforcing that boundary really infuriated and frustrated her, you know, and then I was guilted for being disrespectful. And let me tell you, well into my 40s, she's still complaining and self-pitying herself about my boundaries as if they were victimizing her. She tearfully complained and lamented, why can't you just get along? Why do you have to put me in the middle? Why can't you just forgive and forget? Damn those boundaries, right? <laughs> she was trying to wear me thin, so I'd give in. And if that didn't work, she tried to wear my, at the time, husband down and um, even my children so that they'd pressure me to give in. Yes, they're, the, they're gonna get their flying monkeys out. They're gonna enlist the flying monkeys to come swarm upon you and pressure you into lowering your boundaries because you're just being mean. You're being unreasonable, right? So this went on for decades and the self-pity, the entitlement was unending and unyielding. I mean, absolutely relentless. And even when I finally just out of exhaustion uh, from maintaining the boundaries, um, when I would relax my boundaries just to buy myself some false peace for a short time, uh, it only encouraged her to continue pushing for more. So they feel like they have won. When, when you relinquish your boundaries or you soften your boundaries, it emboldens them. It encourages them to keep breaking you down harder. And so, you know, she wasn't grateful for my grace. She was resentful that I had not given even more. And this is a mindset of the narc that we're dealing with um, in, you know, having to maintain boundaries. It's exhausting. It's very exhausting. Understand that these kind of people are determined and resilient. They will not stop trying to get you to relinquish uh, or at least blur your boundaries. They might let off if there's a big confrontation. They might let off for six months and be on their best behavior, minding their P's and Q's, but eventually they always relapse. That facade comes off of, I'm playing, I'm being nice, I'm doing what you said, but they'll always revert back to the old trying to hammer you down, okay? If you're in a relationship with a narcissist, be prepared. You're gonna have to continually reestablish and maintain boundaries. They'll not respect them. Some will openly violate them. And for this reason, it's work and it's exhausting work. You're going to get fought over it. Get ready for it. They will get angry and some of them will go to great lengths to stop you. They will try to wear you out so that they can break you. And that's exactly what they want to happen. Their faith in their ability to break your boundaries is so strong because it's worked so effectively in the past so many times. You, on the other hand, haven't developed 
years of having this faith in yourself. So you must have compassion for yourself, especially if you're coming from a background where you were taught to defer to others to your own detriment. If you were taught that this is how you make relationships work is by making yourself less, less important than others, because this is the only way that you can have any hope of ever getting your emotional needs met, then you have to understand it is especially hard. You have to relearn and reprogram. It's not your fault, but it is your problem. Make a decision to focus on yourself and who you want to be. Don't let these people allow you to compromise the truth of who you are and what you want so that they can maintain their facade. You've got to ask yourself, in terms of what you want to be, who do you want to be around? What do you need out of this relationship in order to respect yourself more? Do you stand for this? Are these your principles? Does this person make you feel small or overwhelmed? What does it take to make you feel confident, empowered, and strong? If you're interested in purchasing this book, Healing from Narcissistic Abuse, Recover from Empathy Deficient Relationships and Emotionally Unavailable People, remember it is on Kindle ebook version. You can get it on audiobook at Audible, and you can also get it in print at Amazon.com. And for those of you who like to sit back and watch and listen, well, I've got the video version over at my Etsy shop. Links for all of these are going to be found down below. And if you want to watch the next video available on narcissism, click here. Thank you all for your support.